Hey, this is Daryl. I just want to talk to you a little bit about what uh, self-sovereign identity means for your company. Um, really, I'm aiming this at a CIO, a CTO, senior manager, CEO, who's really concerned about where technology is going and where this came from. I've got a business partner now. Initially, he was a client and a friend. Um, very successful businessman, multiple companies. And he has two questions, only two questions really ever keep him awake at night. That is, uh, what don't I see and what don't I know? In my particular case, we were looking at technologies that could impact his businesses, either um, opportunities that we we're going to miss because we weren't aware of them, or probably more terrifying, those opportunities that are come along and sideswipe a company, just something that just comes along and just knocks you out of the game because you didn't see it coming. So I was thinking, and that's how we got involved. We're now, uh, as I mentioned, he's a client, and now he's a, uh, we're full partners, and we're investing in the space of self-sovereign identity. And that's why I've recognized that uh, really there's a need for deep consulting. And that's one of the things I've been doing for all my life. So that's what I'm doing for, for the next while. So I wanted to talk a little bit about companies and what does identity mean and what does self-sovereign identity mean to them. Right now, if you are in a company and you talk to anybody on your IT team, identity has only two roles in your company. It's as far as fiscal and, and, and business. It's an expense and it's a liability. Um, the costs are enormous to maintain a digital identity infrastructure uh, for your employees. When you bring your customers into the fold, it gets a little worse because the liability you have, look at Experian and all the dozens and dozens of other breaches now. I mean, there's an automatic chat bot right now. You can sue Experian if you're American and you're one of the 142 million customers. You can sue them through a chat bot, start the proceedings for 20, for, with a chat bot for a $25,000 case with almost no effort at all. Imagine the company liability there. The thing is about the identity is there's very little benefit from the cost. There's, it, it really is a true expense line item. There's no revenue drive. But with self-sovereign identity, things are shifting. What would happen if identity, digital identity, the fact that you could establish a deep, trusted relationship with your customer that they control, their identity side, you are influencing the relationship and you control your side of the relationship, just like we do in life. It's exactly how we do it in life. Digital identity up until now has been very, very different from our real world. So now this shifts identity for, to be a cost cutter. Your costs are different because you don't have the liability of having my information that you don't need. The stuff that we need, hey, cool, you needed it for business. That's just normal business process. But there's personal identifiable information that you're liable for all around the world. Depending on what country or, or area you're in, it's a higher liability or lower. But then you also switch over to having a deeper relationship with your customer. Digital identity, self-sovereign identity in particular, becomes a revenue driver. It actually starts to drive revenue because now it's a deeper marketing channel. You can truly attribute as opposed to guess. You're guessing it's me. You're tagging me along the line. You're cooking me to death on the market, internet marketing. Well, why don't we just establish that relationship up front? Why don't we be clear? It's also an asset. If you take a look at it, I was just reading The Economist the other day. Um, when Caesar's Palace, Caesar's Entertainment went down, um, the assets were sold. The biggest asset, at least it's more than the next one, but the, the biggest asset, a billion dollar database of their customer, their customer's habits, the relationships, what the spend has been, was a billion dollars. That's more than the land in, on the strip in Vegas that Caesar's Entertainment was worth. Just gives you an idea where that asset of a real deep trust relationship and Caesars had a great relationship with their customers. So I'm looking at this as how are companies approaching self-sovereign identity? It's still early days. It is a technology that is shifting. We are seeing companies on every domain reaching in and starting to kick it because they realize that this is, this is truly going to change things and if they don't get ahead of the curve, their competitors will be ahead of them. So how do you start? You start small. You start off with proof of concepts. You start off with pilot projects. You don't try to go full bull. It's not ready for that. You're not ready for that. The shifts that there's a lot of business changes that have to happen, and, and the technology is still early days. It's quite strong, but the tooling is is a little rough and stuff like that. So you need to also start with really two types of people in your shop. Both of them need to give you your best. Don't give this to someone in your shop who is, uh, you know middle of the pack type of person you need to get your keenest technical person but you also must have a business person who really gets your business and understands what changes when you can touch your customer in a different way what changes when you can 
establish that relationship the best salespeople and best marketers have because they get on the phone, they talk to people face to face. How does it change when you can do that digitally at scale without violating privacy, without really getting creepy with your customers? So take your best people, take a couple of them, maybe a group of them, and find someone who can help you approach the technology and figure out how you can you know, do it in an innocuous project where you can learn, but it won't affect your, your running business. Put it on the side. A lot of uh, big banks, corporations, telcos, you name it, uh, health companies, they're doing this kind of in a lab environment. Many of them are already transitioning into full pilot projects in the operational, pseudo-operational environment, though. So keep that in mind. Self-sovereign digital identity is going to change the game. If you want to get out of the curve, start small. And good luck. Talk to you later.